Kamros Pradeep, Kami. you spend a lot of time in this space doing advocacy, doing research. Uh, Harish Ayer makes an important point. You need to prevent stigma. But just given how human beings are, in the way that word travels, generalizations uh, are abound. Therefore, how do you prevent that stigma from spreading? And, uh, you know, just ensuring that it doesn't just go out that this is basically spreading through sex between gay men, which isn't the case. Oh, I think I agree with Harish. I think uh, it, uh, I, it echoes the way things are being uh, portrayed now. Uh, it echoes like how it started with uh, HIV, like it was called GRID. Uh, so, and it was predominantly thought a disease of gay men. So what actually happened was the rest of the community were actually left out before you realize that everyone in the community get a, gets affected. Uh, the same thing is happening probably here as well. Uh, I think uh, it's not a sexually con uh, contracted disease. Uh, it is a disease which spreads through close contacts. Probably the fact that it started off with in the gay community and we just had the, a Pride Month uh, uh, in the month of June uh, is probably the reason, you know, uh, a lot of gatherings uh, has probably helped the spread of infections. But we probably need to look at other uh, communities as well. Uh, it's just not uh, limited to uh, gay men or bisexual men. And I think we should stop using these headlines that says gay or bisexual men. To also reiterate, even with HIV, when it was first identified in India, it was identified in commercial sex workers. It's probably why it's still stigmatized that, you know, people are always judged as to, you know, with a moral compass thinking you know, anybody who has HIV invariably would have had to go to a commercial sex worker or something like that. So breaking that initial line or a statement that somebody makes, it's, it's very difficult in the community. So I don't really know. So the only thing that you can probably do is take out that tag uh, that says that, you know, it's a disease of gay men and uh, probably try to promote it as a disease that, that spreads through close contact. Dr. Pragya Yadav at the National Institute of Virology, where you're also a scientist at the Indian Council of Medical Research. When you look at the manner in which these reports are coming to you at the NIV, uh, and the most recent example is of the COVID pandemic, when you compare the two viruses in layman's language, what are the similarities, what are the dissimilarities? So, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Rahul. Uh, um, similarity, and it, it's very difficult to compare these two diseases. They are very different disease uh, like SARS coronavirus transmitted uh, mainly through the uh, sneezing, coughing and by oral aerosol. But in case of uh, monkeypox, uh, which is a pox DNA virus, SARS coronavirus is a RNA virus. And uh, DNA virus, this virus is very large in genome size. And also uh, we don't see the mutation which we have seen during SARS coronavirus, uh, which has gone through different variants and then variant of concern. So, uh, those. Sorry, uh, can I, I pause you to ask what might seem a rather lay and silly question to you, but is important in my view? You're saying it's not mutating. Why? So, I'm not saying it's not, not mutating, but I'm saying it will not mutate as fast and with the speed Why not? Uh, which we have in SARS. Because it is a, a, DNA poly, a DNA virus which has its own DNA polymerase, and the uh, rate of mutation or changes are lower. But recently when these cases started and now as we know that there are seven, more than 17,000 cases across the world and uh, it is passing from one human to human. So there uh, we are, people are seeing some mutation but uh, there is not much significant uh, which can bother uh, scientifically uh, people across the world. No, so, so from so what I gather there are apparently two strains of this virus. One is the Congo strain, the second is the West African strain. The Congo strain exactly. is more fatal than the West African strain. The Congo strain has a mortality rate of 10%. The West African strain has a mortality rate of only 1%, which means only 1 of 100 people, if they get the West African strain, die. 1 of 10 people, if they get the Congo strain, could die. Which strain do we have in India? So, uh, so the outbreak which is started and is spreading across the globe is uh, caused by the West African strain. And India, uh, the, all four cases which has been detected, uh, found the same strain, which is West African strain, not only by the real-time PCR, but also by genome sequencing, it is confirmed. 
so i think that reduce a uh, uh, worry also uh, that we have less pathogenic or severe strain in india as it is present in the rest of the part you know, the other thing that became really important at the time of the covid pandemic was the r rate the rate of transmissibility you said that uh, yeah. it transmits from one person to another uh, is that the way it's likely to be or could that go up or go down so at the moment uh, initially it was one to one but now uh, there are some cluster of cases are uh, getting reported but it's still r0 is is very low in compared to sars corona virus which we have seen in why is it low dr shahid jameen i'm sorry i'm glad that it is low but just so that i understand why is the rate of transmissibility of uh, the monkey box virus much lesser than the rate of transmissibility of the corona virus well when you talk about r not when you, you you talk about community transmission uh, so far the monkey box virus is transmitting in very close networks uh, so it's not really transmitting at least so far uh, that much in the community although that's the next thing that will happen it will get into the community it's already getting in the community if we if we see what happened in the delhi case it's probably a case of uh, community transmission 